Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to look at the three new features added to the guided edit mode in Photoshop Elements 12. Let's go over to Elements and get started. Right now I'm in Expert mode, so I'm going to click on Guided to go into Guided Edit mode. On the right is a list of all the guided edits that are available. And they're grouped into categories. The first category is Touch-Ups, and further down we have a group called Photo Effects, and I need to scroll down to see the third group, which is called Photo Play. In Photoshop Elements 12, they added a new guided edit to each of those three categories. Let's scroll back up to the touch up section. And the new guided edit here is called Restore Old Photo. Before we take a look at that, I'm going to go to the upper left corner of my window and click on the View field, which right now is set to After Only. And when I click on it, I get this list of options for viewing, and I'm going to choose Before and After Horizontal. Now I'll be able to see my progress. I'll go back to the Touch Ups category and click on Restore Old Photo. And basically what you get in the guided edit mode is a set of steps for what to do in what order and access to the tools needed to do each task. Step 1 says use the crop tool to highlight the area of your image that you want to keep. So I'll click on the crop tool and that puts a crop box around the photo. You can use these eight handles to adjust the crop. I for sure want to crop away the background. To do that, I just pull two of the opposite corner handles to bring the crop box right up to the edges of the photo. So I would grab the handle in the upper left hand corner and drag towards the center diagonally until my crop is right to the top edge and to the left side of the photo. And then I would go to the bottom right handle and click and drag towards the center until the bottom uh, edge of my crop is right to the bottom edge of the photo and to the right side of the photo. But see at the top of the photo, I'm actually missing pieces of the photo. Well, I don't really want to fill those areas in since it's not really an important part of the photo anyway. It's just kind of a dark background. So I'm going to pull down the center handle to crop that part away. And notice how on the right side, part of his arm is behind something. So I'm going to pull in that right side to crop that away. And then I'll pull it in on the left side also to keep it more balanced. And I'll just kind of go to the edge of her arm. And in this particular photo, you might be tempted to crop more of the bottom away so that we don't have to fix that missing corner down in the lower right. But I feel there's too much detail in there to get rid of it. So I'll leave it as it is and click the green check mark to accept the crop. Step 2 says use the following tools to repair your image. And there are four different tools to choose from. I'm going to just go through this part rather fast. I'll click on the spot healing tool and use the left and right bracket keys to make my brush just slightly bigger than the line I'm trying to repair. When I press the right bracket key, my brush gets bigger and every time I press the left bracket key it gets smaller. So now my brush is just a little bit bigger than the size of the line that it's over. So all you do with the spot healing tool is click and drag over the line you want to get rid of. And look at that, it does a really good job in most cases. Sometimes it's not quite that good. So I'm just going to go over some of these spots and lines on a spot like this, all I have to do is click once, and it takes care of it. So there's our final result. Not too bad. And you could experiment with some of those other tools if you're experienced enough to know how to use them. But the spot healing tool does a lot and it's probably the easiest one to use. And I don't really need to use the, the dust removal. So I'm going to scroll down and step four is to improve the color and contrast of your image using the following buttons. And they have auto levels. So I'm going to click that. Now that gave us a uh, high contrast black and white, which 
to me it just looks too stark. I don't like that effect, so I'm going to undo that by pressing Command Z on a Mac, or it would be Control Z on a PC. That just takes away that last move. What I like better is to convert it to black and white, so I'm going to do that. And actually, some people like the uh, brown sepia tone effect that was on it before, so you might not even want to convert it to black and white. And I've done a little testing with this sharpen, but it gives you absolutely no control, and I didn't like the results I got. You can try it, and if you don't like it, you can Command or Control Z to take that off. What I would do is I would move into Expert Edit at this point and apply any sharpening that I wanted to. But we aren't going to go into all that for this video. So let's move on and check out the Zoom Burst Effect, which is another new feature in Photoshop Elements 12, and it's at the bottom of the Photo Effects group. I'm going to click on this X right here to close this photo, and I'm going to say Don't Save. So in our Photo Effects at the bottom, we have zoom burst effect and I'll click on that and then we get our step-by-step -step instructions for applying the effect and step one says use the crop tool to crop your image so that the primary subject is in the center you're not always going to be able to crop it that way I see that as kind of a drawback to this but the photo I have here the girl kicking the soccer ball is the primary subject in this photo so It'll work pretty well for this one, but just be aware that it applies this zoom burst from the center of your photo. I'll click on the crop tool, and I want to keep everything on the top and the sides. I could crop away a little of this bottom if I wanted to. So yeah, let's actually do that. Say OK. And then step two says click the add zoom burst button to apply the effect to your image. Press multiple times to increase the effect. Okay, so I'll click that. I'm going to click it a couple more times to increase the effect. And you can see every time I click on it, it really enhances that effect. And step three is click the Add Focus Area button and then click and drag on your image to specify the area of focus. Repeat as needed to increase the area of focus. Okay, so I'll click on the Add Focus Area and then move over to my photo and I want her face to be in focus for sure. So I'm going to click and drag across her face to make uh, small little moves and multiple moves maybe with this because I don't want to go too far. If I do go too far like maybe I did here, you can just Command or Control Z to remove that last move. There we go, that's a little better. And I'm going to bring some more of her shirt in focus. And let's try maybe bringing a little of her hand into focus. So I'm pretty happy with that. Step four is, it says, optional, add vignette to your image. Click the button again to intensify the effect. Okay, so I'll click on that. It puts a dark vignette around the outside edge. I think it just takes too much of the color and brightness of this photo away, so I'm going to Command Z that. That's it for this, so I'm going to click Done. This feature is called the Puzzle Effect, and it's right here, so I'll click on that. Here's our step-by-step -step instructions. Step one says, click on one of the buttons below to give your image a puzzle effect. I'm going to choose this large one. Then step two is enhance the effect by extracting a puzzle piece, 2A. Click the select puzzle piece button and then click on the center of any puzzle piece. Okay, so I'll click on the select puzzle piece and now I'm going to click on this puzzle piece and you can see the marching ants appear around that puzzle piece which means that it's selected. Step 2B says click on the extract piece button to extract your selected puzzle piece. I'll click that and you can see it moved it out of position on top of uh, my photo. And step 3 says use the move tool to arrange the extracted piece. I'm going to move it over here so we can see it a little better. I'm going to rotate it a little bit too. If I put my cursor near one of the four corners, you can see that it turns into that curved double-headed arrow, which indicates that now if I click and drag, I can rotate the piece. I'll give it a slight rotation and then click the green check mark to accept it. 
and now I'm going to select another puzzle piece. So I'll click on the select puzzle piece and I'm going to take this piece, extract it. I'll move it over here, maybe give it a little rotation the other direction. Click the green check mark and let's do one more piece. I'll select this one, extract, move, rotate, click green check mark, and I think that's all I'm going to do. Now step four, it says optional. If you extracted two contiguous pieces from the puzzle, use the eraser tool to erase the boundary line between them. If you look at my photo, you can see where I took these pieces out, where they joined each other. You can see the lines, um, and that's what they're talking about. I'll click on the eraser tool, and then move over to my photo. And again, you can use your left and right bracket keys to adjust the brush size. And then just click and drag over those lines to erase them and then I'll click done. That's a look at the three new features that are in the guided edit mode in Photoshop Elements 12. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.